So what does it mean to get ghosted by a customer? That's the question. So when someone's ghosting you, it simply means they have no need to talk to you. They don't want to answer your question because they know already what you're calling about. You're one of those people that call when you need something. Try to be one of those people that call when you don't need anything. Try following up by giving them information and value of some kind. Whether it's a recipe for some sort of dinner they mentioned in your conversation, whether it's a, hey, tell your wife happy birthday, whether it's, uh, you know, hey, I was perusing the, the, the paper and I saw this article you might find beneficial, but you use follow-up as, as, as an opportunity to build the relationship more and more. And nine times out of 10, that strategy prevents ghosting. You have to understand that when you follow up with somebody, it's just another opportunity to build and, and add to the relationship. So if your question is, are you ready to buy yet? Or you're following up to see if they're ready to buy and they're not responding, it basically means you didn't build a good enough relationship to begin with. So try listening, asking better questions and forming a human connection and make them understand that you're there to help them and everything that you reach out for is to help them, is to give them additional value. You will probably not get ghosted so much. So millionaire secret to attracting more customers. So one of the best strategies to implement to attract more customers is to train your people effectively and ask for referrals. That's probably the, one of the best strategies. The next best strategy is just to straight up pay for it. Advertise. Quit holding on to all those dollars that you're making. And if you're not making any dollars, it's probably because you're not advertising. You're not marketing. You're not asking for referrals. Your people aren't trained. You're not taking care of the customer. You're not making sure that you deliver on your promise. You're not making sure that your product and service is top notch. That's more than one strategy, but you get the picture. Morning rituals, my morning rituals. Yeah, my morning rituals. Well, listen, every single morning I wake up, I, 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 I start the day off with gratitude, extreme gratitude. I'm thankful that I can even have the day. I know that it's worth more than a million dollars in cash. I focus on gratitude is the first thing I do. The second thing I do is get a little bit of workout in. I make sure that my heart gets pumped, my blood gets pumped, my heart rate gets elevated, I sweat a little bit, and I make sure that I hydrate and nourish the body at least once during the morning. That's just a morning habit that there's no, there's no, <coughs> it's an op, it, 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 it's what you call a non-negotiable. So my morning routine is to wake up with extreme gratitude, then I focus on my health, then I focus on relationships so I'm not one of those people who just reach out when I need something. I reach out to see how you're doing. I reach out with value. I just touch base and build relationships. Okay. The third thing I do is I focus on what's going to drive revenue today. I pick five things that I must do before I go to bed that drive revenue. Why? Because money's important. Anyone that thinks money's not important doesn't have enough or they've never had enough or something's wrong because money is very important. You can be more of who you are. You can advertise more. You can prepare more. You can hire the best counsel. You can you know, access more culture, more travel, more doors are opening, more places. You're allowed into you know, the places that your customers are at. So I focus on the five things that drive revenue. And then last but not least, I seek information, new information. The key word is new. You see, if we want to stop getting what we're getting, we got to stop doing what we're doing. In order to stop doing what we're doing, we have to change our beliefs. Our beliefs are why we do what we do and say what we say and choose what we choose. So in order to change your belief, you have to get new information. So I basically created a morning habit to seek new information every single day. There's no day off. I seek new information voraciously. Number one habit killing your motivation. What habit? Well, I mean, dude, I don't have habits that kill my motivation, so it's a hard one to answer. I can only make some assumptions, you know, smoking weed, you know, wake and bake, 
that's probably a habit that kills your motivation. But then again, maybe it, maybe it motivates you. You know, I don't like jumping to conclusions. I can only assume. And when you do that, you're shooting in the dark and hoping you hit a target. So if I were to tell somebody what to stop doing to stop killing their motivation, my mind runs blank because I have no idea what habits people are doing that kills their motivation. You don't know what motivates individuals. Everybody's motivated by different things. Who am I to come along and say, this habit kills your motivation? Number one question customers need you to answer. The number one question customers need you to answer if you want to be successful is how does your product or service benefit them in a way that they value your product or service more than they value their money. They need you to answer whatever questions they need to get enough information to make a decision. The reason customers don't make a decision is because you haven't provided enough information or done so satisfactorily. Because people don't buy products, they buy solutions. People don't buy your product or service, they buy the results. I'm not buying your lawn mowing service, I'm buying a fresh cut you know, lawn. People buy the results, remember that, especially when you're selling. And whatever questions you need to answer to give them the confidence and the trust and the information they need to make a decision is the, is the question. And I don't think there's just one question. There's multiple questions. The question is, is do you know how to build value in your product or service? Because if you don't, you're not going to make an exchange. An exchange happens when the value of your product or service exceeds the value of their money. So you're going to have to ask a lot of questions and then assuming your product or service is something that they're not familiar with, you're going to have to answer whatever questions they need you to answer to build trust, build the relationship and exceed the value of their money. Simple as that. So what have you found to be the dark, ugly truth about being your own boss? I think the dark, ugly truth about being your own boss is the fact that you have to have discipline. You have to have consistency. You have to show up when you don't want to. You have responsibilities that most people don't have when you're your own boss. There's nobody leading you. There's nobody encouraging you. You have to do it for yourself. And the dark, ugly truth is most people lack the discipline to be their own bosses, which is why most businesses fail. They don't consistently show up and do the right things repeatedly and consistently, which causes failure in most cases. That's another dark, ugly truth about being your own boss. Failure is a part of the game. We don't want to fail. We don't want to lose. We don't want to be seen as somebody less than. But guess what? That's part of the game. What have you found to be the key ingredient to successful sales? Why is this element so important? Well, the key ingredient to successful sales is building relationships and trust. You have to have trust, man. People need to trust you. A lot of people think they need to like you. They need to trust you more than they need to like you. If you wanted me to come to your house and you trust that I'm not gonna kill you in the middle of the night, isn't that more important than just liking me? So if they don't trust you, trust me when I tell you this, they're not gonna buy from you. You need to establish trust and build that relationship to a point where they can trust what you're saying and they feel confident in your advice or your counsel or your product or your service. So the key ingredient to successful sales is empathy. I mean, see, they say the key like there's one. There's not just one, man. There's empathy. There's asking questions. There's listening, active listening. There's building relationships. There's freaking demonstrating ethics and integrity. There's multiple key ingredients to successful sales. It's not just one. There isn't just one.